Yep, that's me. You're probably wondering how I got here. Swag surfing in an ancient dialect. I'll give you the cliff notes, but first let's go back to 2021. I don't, I don't know what to say for myself. I just need to snip every connection to me right now. I just, I just want to be alone. I just want to be by myself. I don't have the capacity. I really don't. Sadly, nothing in this video was acted out. This is a clip from my journal. I was in one of the darkest periods of my life. As a mind, body, spirit, wellness educator and psychic medium, I had all the tools to be ascended. Yet here I was, drowning in my human experience. So I isolated for weeks and months, hoping to come to a moment of levity where I would find out not why I wasn't aligned, but what I was aligning with. Now let's fast forward to February, 2022. You see, when you really surrender to the plan and honor your multifaceted experience, you're taken right where you need to be. And in my suffering and surrendering, strangely enough, I was led to Siri Rishi Kar, Kundalini High Priestess and Fearless Lioness and leader of Temple 143 and the School of Infinity, where I didn't know it yet, but I would shed blood, sweat, and tears. On February 4th, 2022, I started day one of 100 days of intense dedication 220 plus hours of becoming a kundalini yoga teacher and priestess. No shade to what y'all think yoga teacher training is like, but this experience wasn't just cat cows and downward dogs. It wasn't pronouncing long ancient names and bending backwards. I had encountered kundalini yoga a few times before, but it found me again because it is the yoga of awareness, an ancient technology that shifts the matter of your mind to reunite you with infinity. I soon realized that Kundalini Yoga is the yoga of remembering who you are. Allow me to reintroduce myself. My name is Dian Karen Kar, meaning the princess and lioness who, by perfecting her meditation, understands that God is the doer and the cause of all things. I know now that I've been doing this for lifetimes, but we're just getting started. If you're meeting me for the first time, Satnam. My name is Melanie Santos. I am a mind, body, spirit, wellness educator and practitioner, psychic medium, energy healer, and Kundalini yoga priestess. I'm passionate about creating space for discovery, healing, learning how to live intentionally, embracing our nuances, and working with energy to align with our divine truth. I am so grateful to be able to share more about how learning Kundalini yoga changed my life. So let's talk about it. First, what is kundalini and kundalini yoga? Meaning awareness and known as the nerve of the soul, kundalini is the atomic energy of creative consciousness. It's the whole energy of the cosmos and the universe and the divine within and beyond ourselves. It resides dormant in the base of our spine in our root chakra or muladhara. And when awakened, it travels up until it reaches the head, helping us break through the limitations of the human world, reconnecting us to our divine consciousness, strengthening our intuition, reuniting us with our highest self, leading us to our most divine truth and ultimately helping us remember who we are. Kundalini awakening is a result of Kundalini yoga, the fastest way to create transformation and establish alignment of your mind, body, and soul. Practicing it stimulates and shifts your glandular, electromagnetic, circulatory, and nervous system through the combination of pranayama, breathwork, kriyas and asanas, strategic postures, meditation, and mantra to raise the Kundalini energy. Most call Kundalini Yoga the most spiritual form of yoga. It's a living technology with ancient roots that date back to 1000 BC, where it was mentioned in the Vedic texts. Today, it continues to inspire spiritual grounding, healing, and reconnection with infinity in the millions who incorporate it into their daily lives, myself included. Here are four ways that Kundalini Yoga changed my life upon diving into its transformative magic. One, Kundalini Yoga emphasized my discernment. I want to get to the elephant in the room by taking a look at why I think it's there in the first place. If you're watching this, you either know nothing about Kundalini Yoga, or you've heard about it and you're curious, or you've heard that it's dangerous and has a dark past. Let's talk truthfully. 
Upon diving into my learnings, I became acquainted with Yogi Bhajan, the man responsible for bringing Kundalini Yoga to the West, teaching his first class in the U.S. in 1969. Kundalini Yoga was originally a Raj or Royal Yoga that was reserved for only the serious, the advanced, or the privileged. But Yogi Bhajan brought the technology to the States during the early 70s, a time of complete political unrest and also spiritual exploration. So naturally, Americans were all over it. I mean, it's an ancient technology that speaks for itself. But he also painted himself like a guru, so naturally, people were also all over him. Bajan led the popularization of Kundalini Yoga in the West and ended up building a multi-million dollar empire in the process. And over a decade after his death, the world became clear on his truth. Financial scams, the sexual misconduct, and the abuse of power that was the foundation for his organization and his social presence. Now, as a teacher, as a person, and more so as a spirit living this human experience, I leaned into what Kundalini Yoga was reinforcing within me when I learned all of this, discerning the truth and creating my own path. And what I know is this. I know that these truths can be confusing and hurtful whether you practice Kundalini Yoga or not. I know that I honor everyone who has been directly impacted by Yogi Bhajan's abuse. I also know that this technology is ancient and that Yogi Bhajan might have been the person who shared it, but it doesn't belong to him. So I carry it proudly, honoring its journey to the modern world while separating the man from the teachings. Listen, I've had many discussions about this with people who agree with me and people who don't. And my truth is this, being somebody who grew up in the Catholic Church, separating the teachings from the man was something that I had to do from a very young age to feel safe having my own relationship with spirituality. If we're throwing out Kundalini Yoga because of a human man that behaved in a way that opposes the teachings entirely, then why hasn't the world done the same with other spiritual practices led by religious leaders who abuse their power? Number two, Kundalini Yoga revitalized my nervous system and then some. Now, if you don't know, the nervous system is responsible for transmitting signals between the brain and the rest of the body, like thinking, but also moving and seeing and just general organ function. Prior to February 2022, I had experienced chronic anxiety and depression for most of my life. And it was because I was living with mental illness and finding natural ways to cope with it without medication that I created a career emphasizing holistic wellness, talking about the importance of realizing how intricately connected our mind, our body, and our spirit are. I have tried it all, and I've tried it all on the internet, from moving my body in different ways, to changing my diet, to taking a myriad of supplements, to deep physical cleansing, and even trying veganism. And still, I had yet to find one thing that brought me back to me and that was sustainable, that held up against my changing mental landscape, my busy life, living in an overstimulating city, etc. Now, a few weeks into my Kundalini Yoga training is when I realized, hold up, I haven't experienced any symptoms of anxiety or depression since I started practicing this daily. I cannot put into words the way that it felt to realize that, but know that for my first memory of depression to have been in the fifth grade and finally feel long-lasting alleviation at age 33, I'm just really grateful. I'm really grateful to be here. One of my favorite parts of my training was learning yoga anatomy. How Kundalini Yoga affects our body on a systemic and a cellular level. Learning that Kundalini Yoga helps strengthen the nervous system by increasing the energy moving through particular nerve pathways, improving the generation of brain cells and their interconnections, and increasing the parasympathetic response while actually doing it. <laughs> incredible and not to mention all the other mental physical and spiritual benefits that it has how it can shift the endocrine system responsible for our hormone health how it cleanses and reinforces the electromagnetic system our aura resulting in a stronger more vibrant aura and how it centers the mind making you incapable of vibrating anything other than your truth this is why i teach kundalini yoga because it helped me reconnect internally so that I could create a different experience for myself externally. Now with that, let's go to number three. Kundalini Yoga changed the landscape of my relationships. Now this is the point where most of you might wanna be tempted to turn this off because you're telling yourself, I don't want my relationships to change. The truth is that some of you have remained connected to people, places, and habits out of familiarity 
and some of those connections aren't serving your growth in any way. Lots of people are comfortable in their stagnancy. And sure, that's okay, do you. But you cannot be nuzzled in cold, dry spaces and then also be angry that you're not growing. I didn't know it at the time, but I was hoarding a few relationships that I thought were honest and fruitful, but they weren't. And two months into my teacher training, everything was revealed to me about those relationships, including the relationship that I have with myself. Now, I've been teaching about personal development for years, but I have never experienced shifts so clear and so fast than when I adopted Kundalini Yoga as a daily practice. I learned very quickly that the kriyas, the meditations, and the mantras that I was practicing were directly speaking to the divine through me. That when I was moving and chanting things like Sat Nam, truth is my identity, or Karta Purk Nirbao Nirver, doing it from the light of truth, fearless, without blame, judgment, or revenge towards self or others, that I was moving in prayer and vibrating these words into the universe, and that everything that I was asking for was being boomeranged back to me. I teach about manifestation not just being something that we practice, but something that is happening every day, whether we're intentional or not. But this living technology physically reminded me of our power and the power of focusing the energy that you want through a daily practice. People sometimes talk about Kundalini Yoga being dangerous for society. And now having practiced it and studied it intricately for myself for a year now, all I can say is, yeah. If you want to stay within the walls of who you were told to be, if you want to sink into society's perspective of life or commit to only experiencing God outside of yourself or not believing in God at all, then yes, Kundalini Yoga is dangerous because it will cause you to break free of any and all limitations because it will awaken you to the God within yourself. Consistent practice of Kundalini Yoga is going to create the container to align you with a version of yourself that you didn't even think was possible, let alone the world around you. And number four, Kundalini Yoga showed me true reverence and respect for spiritual practice. Now to put things into perspective for you when it comes to spiritual practice and respect for it, again, I come from a Catholic background. I was a Catholic schoolgirl from age 3 to 22 with a brief public school intermission from age 15 to 17. I am a first Friday mass going Sunday altar serving, sleepover at the convent with the nuns, choir practice every week, Catholic school girl. Now I've had a long spiritual journey, so now I am not. I experience God in my everyday and still with everything I've experienced when it comes to spirituality and my commitment to it, I thought I knew reverence. I thought I knew respect for spiritual practice, but sadhana challenged that entirely. Sadhana is a yogic term for daily spiritual practice, one that's done early in the morning before starting the day. Staying disciplined to your sadhana keeps your mind clear to guide your actions consciously and initiates your expression as your most divine self every day. I was taught to honor sadhana in a very traditional way. So that meant learning to wake up at 3.30 in the morning for Ishnan, a cold shower to wake up the mind and body and stimulate the blood, then sitting for Amrit Vela sadhana from 4 a.m. to 6.30 a.m. in full bana, white clothing and a white head wrap. I get it now. Honoring daily sadhana and also more specific 40, 90, and 120 day sadhanas where if you miss a day, you gotta start all over. Sadhana has taught me about respect for spirit and myself in new ways that I'm very grateful for. Now, I keep talking about how Kundalini Yoga is amazing and has changed my life in many different ways, but I'm building a part of my channel here where I'm going to continue to talk about it. So thank you for sitting with me, for allowing me to share my story. This technology has offered me back to myself in ways that I want the world to experience for itself. So if you want to learn more from my perspective, subscribe to my channel and like this video while you're at it. And if you'd like to take Kundalini Yoga classes, courses, and sadhanas with me, make sure that you're subscribed to my mailing list. All links are posted in the description box. Stay intentional. Remember who the fuck you are. See you in the next video. Satnam.